Hello my little fish. Welcome back to Calypso's Co. where the magic is our message. It is your mistress of magic, Black Aphrodite, here again with another pick a card. Tonight we are journeying into one of the first aspects of the feminine that you must surrender to in order to have true sacred feminine energy. And we are connecting to the dark goddess, the underworld goddesses, the underworld energy, aka shadow work. Now, when I say underworld, I mean those underlying currents that lie within our emotional body, our emotional sea. Those subconscious thoughts that hold us back, those wounds from childhood, those words that were said, those moments that we had that's lingering inside of us, blocking certain parts of our auric field. There are goddesses, so many goddesses, who have myths, legends, um, folklore, whatever you'd like to describe it as, describing this journey of going into the underworld and coming up queen, coming up transformed. Because as a sacred feminine, you must integrate those aspects of yourself to sit on your throne. And I have been renewed in my purpose to ignite all divine feminine energy as well as myself to step up on our thrones and reclaim our sacred power. So the first way that we do that is enter the dark healing chamber of the goddess. And that is what we are doing today with our descent into the underworld. We have three beautiful goddesses who represent different descents into the underworld and they will be guiding you today on your journey giving you insight giving you messages and giving you so much love and support and I am so honored to be going through this I'm excited to hear what these goddesses have in store for us and I feel like there could be healing for all of us in every single pile so Without further ado, let us go connect you with your guide into your journey in the underworld. Hello, everybody. So, I would love to introduce you to your guide. Your guide is going to be your connection to your healing. She is going to usher you into this. Um, we will have a little meditation in the beginning to connect to this goddess, and then we will receive her messages. So, the first guide is pile number one. Your goddess guide into the underworld is Goddess Anana, who vows to help you believe in yourself. She is a Mesopotamian, Sumerian goddess. Pile number one. Pile number two. Your goddess guide into your shadow work is goddess Persephone. And she promises you new beginning. This is her sacred vow. Pile number two. And pile number three. Your goddess guide into your underworld journey is goddess Kali. And she is here to offer you spiritual transformation. This is her sacred vow. Pile number three. So 
So meditate, take a moment, and connect to yourself to feel which goddess is calling out to you. And we will meet you at the gate. Hello, beautiful brothers and sisters. Welcome to your healing chamber, where your goddess guide, goddess Inanna, is going to usher you into your shadow work. Goddess Inanna is a goddess who has been worshipped for over 3,000 years. Her descent into the underworld is legendary as she herself went down into the seven gates, which are known as the seven chakras, and performed the purification act, and had herself be reborn as queen of heaven. She is here to help you to ignite self-belief. And I have all of these cards laid out here, and we are going to go through each one. And each one is a message from Goddess Anana. So first we have the Seven of Cups in reverse. So the first message for you, pal number one, is you have so much more within you. If cups are connected to emotions, then that means that you have a bevy of wealth inside of you. And I hope I use that word correctly. <laughs> but seriously, you have so much, so many gems inside of you. So many ways that you can be pile number one. And there's a part of you that needs to actually see this and change this from a reversal. Change this block, right? There's a block here inside of you that stops yourself and prohibits yourself from seeing all that you are truly capable of. And I know that this is eating you up inside pile number one. I can feel it all over my body because this is boiling up inside of you, right? These cups, again, represent emotions. So that means your inner world is so rich. You could potentially have a water moon. Um, you could be a water sun sign rising Mercury. Okay? Or just, there's just so much inside of you in general. So many thoughts, so many ideas. I mean, you are so creative, pile number one. And Goddess Anana is telling you right now, believe in this creativity. Believe in these ideas. Nurture your inner world. Nurture your creativity. Take the time to actually really hone in on the fact that you are so brilliant. And you don't need anybody else to remind you of that. Come into this knowing and see the full picture of all of the aspects of who you are, number one. And all of the aspects of what you're capable of creating. Okay? Some of you guys are hiding talents and have been doing so for a long time. And it's time for you to be seen and it is time for you to be heard. It's time for you to embrace the gems that lie inside of you, okay? Next, we have High Priestess, Mysteries Revealed in the Eyes of Isis. So, of course, we're going to have Goddess Isis here, who has her own connection to rebirth stories. And she's here telling you that you're a High Priestess, and there are going to be secrets revealed to you the more you open up to this multi-dimensional aspect of self. Looking at this card, I'm feeling like you have a past life. Um, excuse me, goddess. You have a past life, whether that be connected to some form of healing or alchemy, or maybe you were an artisan of some form. 
this is information that really has been given and connected to you over lifetimes of these new mysteries, this this new being that's always been there for you. And especially with these cups here, I'm hearing from Goddess Anana that you have some hidden talents and abilities, pile number one, that have been lying dormant and have been really bubbling up. Like this, um, this Pharaoh's face here is very intense. And I feel like this is the way that your spirit guides, you know, even your own self, your higher self has been looking at you, pile number one, waiting for you to really fully ignite in who you are and kind of step up into accountability, into your throne of knowing that there is more for you to do. You have a higher purpose here on earth, pile number one. And you really have to step up and to channel this information. A high priestess is a sacred channel. She allows her body to be the vessel for the divine, to speak through her, to move through her. Allow God to move through you, you know, and it's time for you to do so by opening up to these sacred gifts. That is really important. And I, I really do feel like there is some guilt here for what you're capable of, maybe potentially from the past life. That's what Goddess Anana is letting me know. Um, tapping into her ancient energy. Um, there's something here where like you really do have um, a very strong, powerful energy pile number one. And maybe in the past life, something happened when you used your power. There might be some old wounds from crusades or witch hunts. Something that just makes you feel like you're not safe. Or potentially you feel like you used your power. Maybe it was your voice or your influence. Um, or maybe it was money that you had, you know, some way that you had a little bit more power over other people. Maybe you feel like you didn't use it in a way that displayed your integrity. And there's a little guilt here. And Anana is saying to reopen up whatever this wound is, reopen up to being vulnerable to the sides of yourself that might frighten you or might make you feel like you'll be misunderstood and really take the time to get to know those aspects of self and open up those spiritual gifts, those gifts from your past life, from your ancestors, okay? So here we actually have red forgive, okay? So there's definitely some purification that needs to happen here. So um, there's a message here as you do your shadow work to take a lot of spiritual baths, pile number one. And also there's an aspect of yourself that you need to forgive with all of these roses here. Roses to me represent um, the divine feminine as well. So maybe there's a mother figure here that you need to forgive. Um, as well in your healing journey, you might have a difficult connection with maybe a sister or basically a female friend or family member that you might need to do some healing with, as well as forgiving yourself. Um, with roses here, roses also represent love. So this could be something that deals with love and you could potentially have a love interest that is no longer present or a relationship that has made you feel like you're in a lot of heartbreak and a lot of pain. And it is time to work into the root chakra. That's what I'm hearing. And really heal that part of you and get re-grounded again. So listening to root chakra music, listening to root chakra guided meditations would be really, really healing for you. So next we have Anasaya Joy. Okay, so again, this reminds me of your multidimensional self. Look at the illustrations on this card. This goddess is literally showing her power to create, her power to create universes, to create life. 
But at the same time, I'm channeling that you really need to nurture every aspect of who you are. There's a part of you that also, again, might have some mother wounds from what I'm seeing on the card and feeling like maybe you were not supported by your feminine lineage from your mother or maybe your mother was absent. There could be also just you connecting to another guardian who is a woman where there was some issues here and you needing to take the time to now give yourself that nurturance that you feel like you did not receive, okay? As well as really um, opening up again to the multi-dimensional self, pile number one. There are so many different aspects of you, um, aspects of yourself that you really don't even allow other people to see. There's so much to you than just what you show on the surface. And this opening feels very vulnerable. It feels very raw to show people that. But there's so much healing in actually taking the time first before you show anybody else to just anoint your own self with love and with kindness and really nurturing these different aspects of who you are. Okay, getting back to your inner child as well. Nurturing your inner child. I'm hearing for you to do some activities that represent your inner child, things that your inner child would enjoy. Okay, really, really getting back to that. So next we have falling in love. Kissing the divine in another, in yourself. I take in another as in other aspects of you. You know, really working on your confidence as well. When you see these two cards, I don't know if you can see them, but they have a lot of red. There's orange, there's yellow. So definitely healing the root chakra, the solar plexus chakra, the sacral chakra, okay? Um... This is such a vulnerable card. When you really look at these two cards, um, you can really see the ring light is blocking your progress. But look at how vulnerable he's laying on her, like how vulnerable he looks. And this baby, babe, can you see? The baby is really resting completely dependent on the mother. So there's a part of you that really has to get vulnerable with yourself, pile number one. When you come into this healing chamber, it's about you de-armoring your heart. That's what I'm starting to hear. Really taking the time to accept yourself for who you are. In the past, you could have a female family member or um, maybe some women around you who had a lot to say that might have been very negative and you experiencing some toxic femininity. So this, you coming into yourself with joy, falling in love with yourself again, honoring yourself, believing in yourself, accepting these multi aspects of you, the part of you that's intelligent, that's charismatic, that's a businesswoman, that's a great friend, that's a great daughter, that's a chef or, um, you know, a great crocheter, whatever it is that you do. You know, I always just try to come up with these examples on the fly, but this will be different for all of you. This is asking for you to embrace those sides of yourself. Um, this will also help you financially, I'm hearing as well. And it feels like this is very hard for you to do, but trust that you are being supported and you are so, so loved and you are going to be around so many more people who love and support you and see you for who you are. Okay, so this is so perfect because we have the heart chakra here with self-trust. So this is enthusiasm, trust, and confidence. Literally, okay, because this is a nasi, a joy, okay, falling in love, believing in yourself, confidence, sacral energy still too, solar plexus energy with the enthusiasm and the happiness. So this is definitely needed self-trust, believing in yourself again, you know, honoring yourself, taking the time to really be present with yourself. 
And this says, unshakable confidence guides my journey forward. Okay, unshakable confidence guides my journey forward. And this is the confidence to accept yourself, right? The self-trust in knowing that you are sovereign, beautiful, and perfect as you are. And you can trust every desire that you have. You can trust your own discernment. You can trust your intuition. And lastly, we have the Seven of Wands. And I believe this is the guide for you to open up your fire, not for fighting and not for defending, but for creativity again. Okay? You can soften because a lot of you have a very guarded heart. So you can soften back into yourself. Love yourself first. Put yourself first. And this is the messages from Goddess Anaya. I really hope that you enjoyed this reading. Please let me know if it resonated. Thank you, Goddess Anana, for guiding us into the healing chamber and giving us messages of what we can do with our shadow work to transform into our happiest, healthiest selves. Thank you to the ancestors and spirit guides and all of those drawn to power number one. Namaste. And until we meet again, bye-bye. Hello, beautiful souls who are connected to the goddess Persephone as your guide into the healing chamber. Goddess Persephone is very popular, especially right now with Lore Olympus, where she has been re-venerated as a goddess of freedom and autonomy, personal choice, personal power, standing up for yourself, and sexual liberation, choice, you know, freedom, and There's also the dichotomy with Persephone as well that she wants us to remember how her story used to be seen as a goddess who did not have much choice, as a goddess who was potentially tricked into staying in the underworld and having to learn and adjust to being um, a wife and a queen very quickly without having any guidance, okay? So some of you are in this beautiful in-between of being shackled and being liberated. And Persephone's sacred vow was to offer you new beginnings, okay? A new beginning where you are always in liberation, You are not still holding on to shackles. Okay, so let's get into your cards and hear the messages from Goddess Persephone. First, we have card 39, vulnerability. Open your heart. Allow yourself to be tender. Okay, so this is very similar to pile number one. A lot of you have to really dive into that heart center. So especially as divine feminine, it is natural for us to go through heartbreak, pain, basically that interpersonal journey to strength is always going to test our heartstrings. And Persephone is here to let you know that it is safe for you to open up your heart center again. It is safe for you to be vulnerable, okay? So that way you can look in the sacred mirror. I am seeing a beautiful mirror right now, like a silver mirror where Persephone wants you to look at it. She wants you to look at your face and see yourself and be open, be vulnerable to really seeing yourself 
for who you are. And she's saying you're not alone. Okay? Um, you're here now. And you don't have to be ashamed. So the goddess is seeing your, your past in this mirror. Okay? She's seeing some of the struggles that you faced and some of the obstacles that you went through in your life. We have the devil card here, okay? So some of you had a negative relationship with substance abusing, okay? Some of you had a negative relationship um, with people, toxic interpersonal relationships. Some of you guys have had a really negative relationship to your responsibilities, okay? Um, to time, to growing up or adulting. Just maybe even a really negative relationship with your father. Uh, a toxic relationship with your inner self as well. Maybe it's been really hard for you over the years. And you've had your own um, emotional up and downs. Excuse me, ups and downs. Uh, maybe a hard time connecting to others as well. This could really vary because, you know, we are all different. This is for the collective, so you're going to have to take what resonates. Um, for some of you guys, you could have also had a hard time turning 28. This could be, again, a difficult con connection, excuse me, to growing up. Persephone has that energy going on. You know, it was hard for her to separate from her mother. It was hard for her to come into her womanhood. And this could be the case for some of you as well. Okay. There's also that um, ingenue energy where the shadow aspect of the ingenue, um, somebody who looks very, very young, um, very youthful, um, also has that aspect where they're connected maybe sometimes to a uh, older person, a toxic parental figure, um, maybe dating somebody who's much older than you or kind of going through something where you're less in power, you know, where you felt like your power was being taken away from you. And Persephone really is urging you to step up into this mirror and to look into this mirror and to recognize how, you know, you have shackled yourself, okay? Because that's what the devil card is all about. These people are not really shackled, okay? They're not really connected. They could leave at any time if they choose to. And this is something that Persephone wants you to understand. You have the power to remove yourself from negative patterns, the same cycles that you keep continuing over and over again, negative beliefs and self-doubt. You have the power to overcome all of it. Next, we have a card from Goddess Isis because, of course, she has to be here as a goddess of transformation herself. And this says, power over the seven scorpions. You have the power to conjure low vibrational forces. And what this means is you, just like the seven gates, the seven chakras in like pile number one with goddess Inanna, you have the power, right, to go to each of your auric energy bodies, each of your chakra systems. And go into yourself and heal pile number two. Basically, you have the power to face your shadow. You have the power to actually face your trauma. Um, Aphrodite, excuse me, Aphrodite is showing up. I didn't even mean to say her name. I meant to say Persephone. Persephone is here to let you know that you can move beyond what you are going through, especially with these wings here on Isis. You have the power to recognize what you have been through and actually alchemize and heal it 
pile number two, but it takes active work. Eight of cups. It takes you moving away emotionally from the same power, excuse me, the same patterns. This is a really, really big thing here. That's why we have Saturn here with the devil card, because that's really the patterns that we have mentally that keep us trapped. And for you, this is something that is emotional. This could also be connected to your money with the eight here, as well as your subconscious. Or you could have um, maybe a very, very prevalent planet in your eighth house. Something that would help you emotionally work out of this. Um, there's some healing for you as well with the planet Pluto I'm getting from this card. So please check where Pluto is in your birth chart and really tap into those aspects in your birth chart to help you go through this emotional reprogramming because that's what Persephone is subscribing to you. Also, um, Aphrodite is here to offer you healing for self-love. Um, she's here to help guide you in self-love. So you can call on these aspects of the goddess of spirit to really, really ignite some real change in your life. Because Persephone is really giving me the sense that you are going through some of the same cycles just to get connected to some form of feeling you want to feel you want to be connected to somebody you want to love you want to know that it's real and that it's there but you've got to get that level of vulnerable with yourself pile number two you can't just overextend that and throw that type of love onto somebody else you have to curate that within some of you guys have been trying to force relationships to work with people that are not going to work some of you guys have been trying to garner attention and sympathy and empathy and love from people that cannot give it to you. And Persephone is saying it is time to remove yourself from that type of thinking. We have card 24 here, potion. Remember to practice self-love. Wow, Aphrodite literally came up to say I will help you with the self-love. I will help you look at who you are. Look, there's also a mirror there too. It looks like a mirror within this picture frame. Okay, so um, really taking the time to curate a self-care routine, a spiritual self-care routine because it says potion here. So this is connected to your soul, right? Not just putting on lotion and putting on face masks, but actually really getting into a real spiritual routine to help guide yourself through your emotional reprogramming. And I'm seeing 1111. Okay. And this will change your fortune. We have the wheel of fortune in reverse. Okay. So some of you guys have been having some issues that have been manifesting outside of just your inner world, but into the physical, right? With your money and with your wealth and kind of feeling like you haven't been receiving the type of opportunities that you want to receive and haven't been able to do the things that you want to do. So goddess Persephone is telling you that if you really tap in to understanding these cycles, to feeling like you have the power to move away um, and conjure up the strength to recognize the patterns that you've been doing and overcome them because you can, power number two, you can really change your fortune. You can become a wealth magnet. You already are a wealth magnet. You know, you can heal what you have going on in your life as soon as you tap into those emotions. Okay. So we have card 37, Queen Mother Nanny, liberation. Okay. Yes. You are to be liberated and being your own queen. Okay, so this is letting me know to get outside in nature, pile number two. Nature is calling your name. I know in the Western Hemisphere, in the Northwestern Hemisphere, we are going into fall and winter, but still get outside, get as much nature as you possibly can. I'm also seeing um, writing 
So doing a lot of journaling, doing a lot of scripting, liberating yourself by actually putting in those actions. For some of you, this is also your eating habits as well. Changing your eating habits, changing your diet, getting more exercise. These are the things that will actually change your life to upgrade you, okay? So we have the King of Pentacles here. And I mean, yes, because... This is actually apropos to what I was talking about with really changing your wealth. Well, the more you have honored yourself emotionally and have walked away from these things, these materials, these vices, whatever it is that's represented by this devil card, you transform the devil card into the king of pentacles. And that's powerful. That's really, really powerful, pile number two. Okay. To be able to really have it all, to have that wheel of fortune inside of self. All right. And lastly, we have inner guidance, the heart chakra. Okay, insight, self-compassion, and safety. Recognizing that you can trust your own inner guidance and allowing yourself to really be open to that. Open up to your own inner guidance, pile number two. And take the time to understand that it is okay to take a second to hear yourself out, to see yourself. Because if you can't see yourself, who else is going to see you? And this says, I listen openly and honor the voice of my heart. Really connecting to that integrity and going from the devil to the king of pentacles. Knowing your own worth, your own value. And again, Aphrodite is here as well as Persephone. Okay, so these were some really beautiful messages for your shadow work and how to help integrate new aspects of self and connect to your healing body. Thank you, Goddess Persephone and Goddess Aphrodite for being our guides through this healing chamber. Thank you for your insight ancestors and spirit guides and those who chose pile number two namaste and until we meet again beloveds bye bye hello pile number three welcome to the dark healing chamber of the goddess this is where you meet your goddess guide kali ma who is committed to using her sword to cut through all illusions, to cut through everything that is false and bring you true spiritual transformation. Kalima I mean, is a very fierce mother goddess of creative feminine energy, high powerful shock. She is the void. She is the cosmic darkness. She is the one who eats the souls, right? Who eats the ego, who takes everything that is fake and eliminates it. And she is here for us today. So thank you, Kalima, for giving us your wisdom. Please honor us right now with insights for healing and walk us through this healing chamber as we come to you to ignite and transform. Okay, so let's start with the first cards, which are the tarot. There are a lot of mental reprogrammings that you as a collective are going to have to go through, pile number three. There are so many things, and this will vary for all of you. That's why I'm saying there's so many things that need to be mentally reprogrammed from childhood for everybody. We have the Six of Swords, okay? So with the water here, there's a lot of mental reprogramming, and this is very, very similar to what's going on in pile number two. So there's a lot of mind shackles right that we told ourselves stay small we told ourselves be regular stay in the crowd don't rile up anybody don't say our real opinion don't be who we really are don't be our authentic self because this is safe 
As long as I don't stand out, as long as I don't shine, nobody can harm me. No one can hurt me if they cannot see me. And you are having to move away from those mental processes. That is something that you've created from childhood to keep yourself in the same predicament, to keep yourself in comfortability. Pile number three. And the goddess is saying, no more. No more will you tell yourself to play it safe. No more will you tell yourself that enough is enough. You deserve to be seen. You deserve to be heard. Okay? I'm sorry about that pause, but I just had to like let that be known. Okay? We have the Queen of Swords in reverse. So Kalima is saying that a lot of you are needing to come into this understanding of initiation. Okay, initiation of thought, initiation of new ideas, initiation of plans and goals. Because whatever has happened to you in your childhood, in your past, dealing with other people, has made it so you are not connecting with your own sharpness. Kalima is saying there's a mental fog, almost like um, the only word I can think of is like a laziness a mental laziness of not really being dedicated to connecting to your goals, whether that is your spiritual goals, financial goals, creative goals, friendship goals, um, personal goals, um, fitness goals, whatever. I could go down a huge list. She's saying that you haven't been mentally dedicated to change. You have not been dedicated at all to actually providing yourself, that's the best way I can say this, with the necessary tools to improve your life because you keep allowing yourself to go down that same stream of consciousness with, oh, um, you know, they used to say this about me in the past and they used to treat me like this and they used to do this. And Kali is saying, where are you at on your own throne? How are you taking control of your own life? You're not doing that, pile number three. You're just allowing what happened in the past to keep you running from one situation to the next. Air energy, you are not clear. It's not sharp or concise. And if that's the case with air, you really, really need to get grounded. That's what she's telling you. And if you can't get grounded, it's time for you to focus your mind. Okay? Kalima is really one of the more tough spiritual mothers, okay? She's really going to give it to you straight, no chaser. Okay, we have the judgment card, all right? So it's really time to wake up and smell the roses. It's it's time for you to start making better choices, <laughs> That's what Kalima is saying. You know, they've told you, they being your ancestors, your spirit guides, you know, God, whoever you want to address it as, has been giving you messages over and over again, pal number three, of it's time for you to step up. It's time for you to stop ignoring your spiritual obligations to yourself. Um, especially if this is like health related to, for some of you guys, like they've been telling you over and over again, it's time to eat better. It's time to do better with your health. You don't want one of those wake up calls. You don't want a Kali wake up call because if Kali comes in the way she's going to come in, it's going to be no, you will have no choice but to change. Okay. So if this is happening to you, accept it and really listen to the call. Okay. It's, it's time for judgment. What are you going to do? Pile number three. What are you going to do for yourself? It's up to you. All right. And then we have the Knight of Swords in reverse. So to me, there's some swift change coming. 
fast action and you have been trying to prolong this for a long time with it being in reverse and Kalima is saying no I'm coming right now this change is happening you will not have a choice okay this may come through another person this may come through another air sign you yourself could definitely be an air sign pile number three and this is like Kalima giving you the final nudge because for you guys, pile number three, you've had a lot of nudges. You've had a lot of hard pushes beyond nudges from your spirit guides telling you what it is. All right, so we have flower. Be honest with yourself. Yes, Kalima is telling you, um, seriously, it is time for you to really take a second and be like, okay, you know, I'm not being clear with myself. I'm keeping things very, very muddy. I am not honestly taking an accountability. And she's telling you it's time for you to do so. And honestly, your spirit guides are not playing around with you. It is time for you to transform because your spirit guides, your ancestors want to heal. That's what I'm hearing. Your ancestors want to heal. Your ancestors want to learn. They want to have access to the information that you have now. They want to have the opportunity to have what you have, okay? They're living through you. And they want you to understand how privileged you are, how blessed you are to be born in this time period with so much freedom to try things and to do things that are new and to be able to make new money and to have new experiences and you know, just have freedom and safety in certain aspects that they never even dreamed of. Okay? So definitely, there's a lot being said here. So we have Goddess Yamaya, our matron goddess, showing up for you with awakening, okay? So you have the softer aspect of spiritual transformation with Yamaya coming through to support you with this more intense aspect of spiritual transformation. So you are definitely going through an awakening process. You are being reborn, right? And spiritually purified. So really accept that. And we have to be fearless, Root chakra energy, be fearless, have courageousness, safe, steadfastness, and feel safe. My courage and self assurance is unwavering. Okay, so you have to be fear like very fearless in this spiritual rebirth because there is a lot beneath the surface. Literally, next we have the unseen card. Too much is hidden from you. Okay, so she's in her own dark cavern so there's a lot i feel for you pile number three that needs to be revealed that needs to be healed and i know that that can be very scary but kali ma is here to help you through your darkness through your dark chamber and to really let you know that hey this is something that you'll have to go through but it's possible you know, and you also have the connection of your galactic body. I'm seeing that here from Goddess Isis. This card says, Lady of the Stars, Priestess of Cirrus. So you definitely have your higher self, your galactic body, your inner self coming through with that etheric support. Um, you could be a very, very old soul, pile number three. Therefore, you have a lot that's unseen for you right now and hidden, but you are a very advanced soul. So if you were drawn to power number three, that means that you have so much that you have stored inside of you in terms of wisdom and knowledge. And <laughs> Kali is saying you cannot be lazy, okay? You absolutely cannot be spiritually lazy with yourself anymore, and her message was just like air, short, sweet, and to the point. So that will conclude your walk through your healing chamber. Um, please let me know if this resonated for you in the comment section below. Thank you so much, Goddess Kali Ma, for walking us through the healing chamber. And thank you to Goddess Yemaya for also being here for support and for nurturing. 
Thank you to the ancestors, spirit, and spirit guides of those connected to pile number three. Namaste. And until we meet again.